A former Miss Ireland has just married a well-known Asian tech nerd, and the internet is talking about it. David, let's break it down. Oh, Miss Ireland, she didn't go with the Conor McGregor archetype. She all went with the Asian tech whiz billionaire. All right, guys, we got to talk about Emma Waldron, 34 years old, marrying Andrew Chen. Uh, Andrew Chen, by the way, is successful. He's worth, what, about in the 50 million? We don't know his real net worth, but she's also very much into tech, but she is a former Miss Ireland. She is beautiful, 5'10". Uh, of course, based off the initial picture, Picture, David, it's kind of going viral because people see it as a stark difference. Oh, beautiful, blonde looking woman with kind of like round face Asian guy. Wow, this is a crazy picture, right? Yeah, I think it's crazy. Obviously, let's be honest, you don't see this a lot happen organically in IRL or even online, to be honest. A lot of people thought he was like maybe the uh, the best friend or just like a homie <laughs> or like nobody even understood that maybe there was a photo from like a movie right, or right, something right. like that. And uh, basically, a lot of Asian guys were giving this guy's props. Some of them were saying it's an L because she's using him. Other non-Asian guys were coming through hating or speculating. You know, some people had a certain tone to their comments. Some people did not. So this just sparked, Andrew, a lot of internet comments despite not really making any sort of like news platforms uh, front page. But let me tell you this, guys. If you knew about the historical context of the Irish woman and Chinese man couple, maybe it wouldn't be so shocking, but please hit that like button. Check out other episodes of the Hot Pop Boys as we delve into this. Uh, David. Real quick, Andrew, you know what else is a pairing between the East and the West? What? Smala sauce. Available at smalasauce.com. I'm saying from Sichuan to Sicily, or maybe in the case of Emma Waldron Chen and Andrew Chen from, from Taipei to Dublin. Hey, made with real truffle and Sichuan peppercorns. It gives you this umami, truffly, tingly vibe, guys. Very flavorful. Please check it out for more information. Also check out the Smala Sauce Instagram for all the content. Um, I can understand why a lot of bros would like have a lot of different reads on this situation, right? This is not actually Andrew, the first like Asian tech billionaire whiz kid beauty pageant type situation, right? Because recently there was a Korean Chinese billionaire who started some sort of like ledger, I want to say like assets management app, who also married a news anchor from Texas, right? A sports caster. And she's girl. Irish too. Yeah, and she's she's actually considered pretty good looking. Also, well, on the bad side, there was that one case of the Korean surgeon out in New York City who married this younger pageant girl who was good looking, but as it, as it turned out, she was low-key being like a escort on the side. Yo, that story is Ooh. crazy because I think there's a lot being unsaid been in that one. Anyway, Andrew, let's go back in history. Why do you are we unsurprised that if there is a successful Chinese guy or Asian guy, whatever, he's with an Irish woman. Yo, uh, I first of all, our family friend growing up, one of our good ones, is uh, was the dad was Chinese and the mother was Irish. Catholic. Yeah, the mom was the dad was from Hubei. Yeah, was he was from China? But, but they, met, was like they met in Missouri, right? Yeah, they met in school. But I, so to me, I'm already introduced to this couple. Looking into history, in 1857, apparently one in four Chinese males in New York. One in four Chinese males in New York were married to Irish women. And then also, guys, there's this other quote from the 1800s uh, describing the couple between Irish women marrying Chinese men, which was apparently very common. They came from opposite sides of the world, but had shared experiences fleeing oppression, facing discrimination, and longing for a better life, and falling in love. The Irish woman and the Chinese man. Yeah, see? One's got the four-leaf clover. The other one's got the green tea. Yeah, it so uh, sense, I also think Irish people, they're pretty humble. They're pretty open-minded. They're not, like, too bougie. They don't take themselves maybe too seriously. And obviously, like, you know, maybe... The UK, or I meant, sorry, Britain of the UK is so used to being like the posh, like uppity ones having the king and stuff. The Anglos. Yeah. The Anglo-Saxons uh, oppressing but, the Celtics, yeah, right? Yeah, but the Celtics are more like, oh, we're just humble, you know? We just we just like tech, and we just like to drink beer and enjoy life, you know? Right. If you I find mean, a good I, man, Long you story go short, with if you guys know in the late 1800s, uh, Irish people and Italians were not fully considered white because they were Catholic. They had different practices. Irish people spoke Gaelic. Italians obviously spoke a variety of different dialects of Italian. So they were considered not white until more, even less white looking people came to America. Oddly enough, even though Irish people generally are more pale skinned than Italians, more Chinese men married Irish women than Italian women. Yeah. Interesting. Um, Some other quick thoughts, Andrew. Not every like beautiful woman or a woman who could have won a beauty pageant wants to date Leonardo DiCaprio or like a crypto guy or some sort of 
D boy or C boy or whatever, right? Yeah. Like, be, there's different types of beautiful women, right? There's IG influencer types. Uh, they tend to be shorter, but they're good at vlogging. There's uh, high fashion models. They tend to be taller. They might be kicking it with Leo. Right. And then there's ones that are pageant queens. I tend to think that pageant queens tend to end up more with like titans of business and industry because yeah. they themselves really more so value commerce. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I would say like being in that pageant circuit is a lot different than being in nightlife and being like a bottle girl. So let's be honest. So I think that she is into tech. She's a, She has a tech company herself. So I'm saying like- She has several. Clearly she's in that world. So she likes guys from that world. And this is the guy she settled down with. Right. Um, anyway, guys, again, hit that like button. Get the likes up. We're getting to the comments section right now. This is from one of the Asian boards saying, hey, what's your guys' excuse, bros? And then somebody said, dude, not everybody's going to be worth like $50 million dominating tech VC and then find a girl who like loves guys who are dominant in tech. I mean, let's be honest, guys. Timing is also part of dating and marriage. And I think that you know, uh, if you look at, she's born in 1989, that makes her 34 years old. So she's probably looking to settle down. Maybe she has had some fun. He's maybe had some fun in his own way. And then they want to decide to settle down with each other. I think it's great. I hope they have kids. And who knows, to be honest, this is like a little bit of an aside, but if, if guys that are not like, let's say they're a lower form of Andrew Chen in the sense that they're not able to impose their will in the business tech world, like he is, I guess you could go to Ireland or you could go to Eastern Europe or you could go to you know what I mean? Like, right. Yeah, you could go somewhere else and find your own Emma Waldron. Pass, be a passport, bro. Yeah, you Possibly. could. You could. Um, somebody said that uh, she is very open-minded and very pro-minority because she actually started a uh, tech company that was tracking minority representation. She used to date like a really smart Nigerian guy who wasn't particularly good looking either. So she's into like brilliant minorities. That's good. Good. I know, but people are saying that this is like Obama's mom. Because oh, if you guys know about the story of uh, Obama's mother, like she dated um, her father who was a Kenyan PhD and then uh, married a guy in, in Indonesia. I hope more beautiful women of every race are attracted to big brain dudes. Mm, I would appreciate that. Yes, yes, yes. More looking at what's underneath the skull than on the uh, exterior of the cranium. Inside of the cranium, right? Yeah, Somebody's saying, uh, how does the love life of some millionaire help or affect my chances? Why should I even care about this information, SMH? Basically, this guy was on one of the, I guess, Asian male boards questioning why everybody's caring about this news so much. Uh, yeah, I mean, personally, I don't think it's a big deal. I think that what we're looking at is Andrew Chen, a high-value man. He gets with a beautiful woman. That makes complete sense to me in but, a nutshell. But isn't he particularly the high-value in that fishbowl yes. of tech? A yes. lot of people use tech, but you're not no. in tech. In a way, it's easier for him to date a woman like her who's she's actually interested in tech herself versus him dating some hot, shallow, like, bottled girl in Vegas. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. Well, they're in the Bay Area, Silicon Valley bubble where like Silicon Valley metrics matter more, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And I, I heard she used to date Eric Schmidt too. Who knows if there's anything to that rumor. Somebody said uh, too many incels are in this message board thinking that white women are impossible to date and putting them on a weird pedestal. We all have the same behaviors as other humans. It's on you, you to overcome the bias to date the women that you want. Yeah. Also, I, I do think to be honest, uh, and this is not, this video is not about how to date white women, but I guess there's different types of white women in the world right now. Just yeah. like there's different types of everybody. There's white immigrants. There's women from Ireland, Eastern Europe. There's, you know, the Mal Moldovan White, women. white Latinas, whatever. Yeah, the Balkans, the, the Slavics, yeah. like the... The whatever, like just, and the, but but they all are actually different, and they all have a different coaching pattern in yeah. their brain from what their parents taught them, and or how society taught mm -hmm. them to feel, or the media they consumed, and how they triangulated with their own self agency. I would say this: it's not necessarily on you to overcome bias. I would say Andrew Chen reached a certain level of success where he could really scope out the whole field from a bird's eye and find women that he was looking for that were open to him too. Right. Do you know what I'm saying? It's not, I don't really think you should necessarily approach women who go, no, 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 I hate Asian guys and try to convert them. Yeah, that's going to be tough. You know what I mean? I, I think you want to find somebody who's no, more open off go, the bat and you, try to convince them, yeah. You are part of spheres or circles or industries that are more exposed and may value Asian men more. Right. I mean, in tech, Asian guys are like 
number two right. to white to Elon's, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, but it might be like one B. Who knows? It's like it's like a high two. Somebody said, uh, from what I noticed, there's a lot of Asian men congratulating him on his marriage, but no Asian women. Does this show the deeper, larger narrative divide between Asian men and Asian women? Because obviously, oh. so many Asian women are gonna like date out, but then like when one Asian guy overachieves dating out, of, of course, of the highest rank you know a hot blonde girl or whatever then nobody congratulates him oh the classic comment there's a divide between asian men and asian women and asian women don't con- want to congratulate an asian man for is punching there, is there truth to way. it yes or no man i mean i think there's a little truth to it but i i just don't think a lot of asian women are following these people on twitter to be honest i did go through the twitter to verify and uh fact check this comment and i saw some asian women congratulating him so i don't think it's it's that i don't i just don't think a lot of People are involved in these types of people's uh, personal lives. I right. saw a lot of nerdy guys congratulating her, and maybe it was through grinning their teeth, like, oh, congrats, ah, <laughs> Emma, we're so happy for you and Andrew. If anything, it should give them more hope, though, right? Yeah, yeah I guess. Because, because yeah. it's, like, happening. For, like, like, the line is moving. I always say this, man. A lot of guys, like Asian guys, they don't understand. Like, you're in the line of a club And, you know, you may be jealous of the guys that are in front of you in the line or however they got there. Maybe that was their own will. They're just super good looking and tall or whatever. But, like, once the line starts moving, you move up in line, too. Mm. Because at one point, the line probably wasn't moving for anybody. Mm -hmm. Um, And uh, certainly, like I said, this situation, everybody was pointing out the downsides. Oh, she's just trading it for money. He's just couldn't believe his luck to find like an open-minded Obama's mom white girl. Some people were pointing out the Chad Korean NYC surgeon who ended up marrying the girl who's cheating on him. Some people pointed out Bobby Lee with his hot mixed Filipino wife and then everybody found out that she was able to cheat on him. And then everybody was pointing out Tony Shea. Tony Shea was a billionaire Taiwanese guy in Silicon Valley. Andrew was very unhappy with his dating life and you know that led him down a dark path. So people were obviously had a healthy dose of skepticism. What do you think about everybody pointing out the negatives? For me, I would like to see everybody say this 10 years down the road when they have like a happy marriage and they're still together with like multiple kids, you know? Like, I I just don't know. Like nowadays, I feel like so many marriages fall apart. Why is everybody like cursing it right now? We got to see how it develops, right? I have a dream that one day when an Asian guy has a beautiful wife that not everybody just assumes that she's with him for the money. Um, (laughs) Yeah, no, I do think some of the tragic love stories do involve an Asian guy, but I don't think that's all hopeless, man. And I just think like, man, marriage happens for so many reasons. And you know, these are two mature people. I'm sure that maybe they have an open relationship or maybe they're the two people who want to, at at least at this point in their life, be ultra conservative. Yeah. No, they they look legitimately happy together. You know, how like you've seen some photos of certain couples and then the girl, the guy, someone looks a little bit like disconnected in them. They look good. Yeah, there's this photo of Chamath and his ex-wife, and you could tell he's over it. Oh, right? he's yeah, he, to, yeah. he got his arm, shoulders over. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm moving on. <laughs> All right, so overall, to wrap this up, guys, because I don't want to talk about this forever, I would say this. To me, Andrew, we have to be able to look at guys like Andrew Chen, even who are not conventionally model-looking, right? And we need to look at him and be like, yo, this dude is like, He's masculine and in his own way. He looks adventurous. He's driving ATVs. He well, he's happy. a beast in his world. Yeah, he's a beast in his world. He's successful. He understands life. You don't think a guy like that gets that successful and doesn't understand yeah. life? Yeah, like, like I think in America, we're so coached to think about the conventional choices, right? Team contact sports. Some women love badminton. And if there's a top-ranked badminton guy, yeah. they're going to give him like way yeah. extra points and, on top of whatever their original is. And this last message I got is for all those kind of like semi-haters on this guy who are like, oh, man, you got to be a giga chair. You got to be good looking. I'm like, I think Andrew Tate would be proud of this guy because this guy's clearly a, a high-value man. He's a high-value individual getting what he wants in life. That's good. Shout out to him. I hope he has a good prenup. Yeah, that, I mean, that would the, be my, you know. Yeah, if you have a lot of money, you should have a prenup for anybody. But anyways, guys, I mean, listen, again, this is not a huge deal. I'm not, you know, popping bottles over this either. It doesn't really matter to me. But I think it's cool, and I think we need to normalize guys like Andrew Chen getting with prettier women. Yeah. Why not? Why not, man? Why can't saying, he have a trophy everybody's wife? everybody's doing it. Why can't he and, have a trophy wife? who knows? Wife? He could get on the HGH TRT just like uh, Bezos yeah. and be looking real yeah. Buff McGruff. By the way, I'm not calling Emma a, a trophy wife. I'm not assuming she is. I'm just saying if she is, then why not? Let him have one. Let us have one. 
Let us ask. Let us know people. what you guys think in the comment section below. I'll say this, guys, uh, and, and keep the comments civil. Um, anytime that news outlets refuse to pick something up, but it goes viral on its own in certain circles on the internet, clearly it's touching some sort of nerve below the politically correct facade of society. So uh, what can or cannot be discussed? You guys, let us know what you think in the comment section below. Shout out to them. I wish them the best. Until next time, we out. Peace. Peace.